What's going on guys? Dragon Speech up here bringing you a video today. Um, today we are going to talk about the Hemikuda that I'm going to be working on. But before that I want to talk to you guys. Um, the plans of this video series and this YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to show you step by step on how I do it. I'm not saying my way is the right way or the only way. But uh, if I help you out in any way any form show you a different trick that you didn't quite know then that's awesome so for uh, anything else I appreciate you guys taking a look at these videos and uh, let me know what you think so here we go uh, it's Ravel's 71 Hemi Cuda that I'm starting with um, nothing too special with this build it is going to be a bone stock build for a competition coming up that I'm going to do um, first thing I like to do is get all the motor components all cut or uh, all set out everything um, we're going to get the motor together and then take a closer look at all the motor components and show you how I do that so first off let's get this motor glued together very carefully doesn't take a lot of glue to get all these parts together so motors together grab a couple of clamps clamp them together um, usually while that's drying I'll take a look at the rest of the motor parts um, make sure there's no mold lines anything that doesn't quite look right on the kit from it make sure everything looks looks good um, we'll take a look you don't know if you'll be able to see it but right there where the tree got clipped off we're just gonna sand that back a little bit smooth make sure it's nice and round so that looks good all those two parts are good take a good look at the headers um, you can see a nice kind of seam line running down the headers from when it gets cast and everything we're gonna sand those out same thing with taking a look at the chrome I'll show you how I fix the chrome for when you cut it off the tree to make it look right so we got a little imperfection right there we're going to get rid of so that carb is nice and smooth where it's supposed to be no rough edges anything like that don't worry about sanding the chrome off I will show you how to fix that my way how I do it look at that great view of the stick So that's all nice and smooth. The bottoms look nice and flat. They should fit nice and perfect when they go on to the intake. Uh, take a look at the fan a little bit on this one. Um, I want to do this build really, really super, super clean since it's a stock build or a box stock build, as I guess you would call it in competition. Um, take a look at the heads. They all look really good. A little bit where it came off the tree. Get that nice and sanded smooth. Check the other side, a little bit right there. Let's see if I can get that in the camera where it comes off the tree that we're gonna fix on all the parts. Just make sure they're nice and smooth, looking good. So we know all those parts are nice and good. Don't have to worry about them. Try not to hit when you sand any of the top chrome, anything these side little tiny pieces, they're really easy to fix. You know, the more time you do this in the prep work, when you actually put your parts together, they'll fit nicer, they'll be look a lot nicer, especially if you're gonna take these to judging that I plan to. 
take a look at the heads you can see a little spot right there where it comes off the, the tree and that's what we're taking care of all those little tiny imperfections when they come off the tree it doesn't take much work to do but it's well worth it make things a lot nicer a lot cleaner won't necessarily look so much like a model so I'll show you all this and I'll do this with most of the parts that I'm working on I'll, I'll work on one thing you know take a closer look at this exhaust same thing we're just gonna run down this to make sure that seam line goes away make it look like it's actually a piece of pipe running down so that actually looks pretty decent just make sure it stays nice and round I'm not sanding a flat spot into the actual exhaust And what I'm using, this is pretty fine. When I prime all the parts and stuff, you won't be able to see these sand scratches out of it. Um, that's another thing you look for, mold injector lines, I guess you'd call them, when they actually cast these parts. Just make sure all those are sanded out. And doing this will add so much more, uh, I guess you'd call it look into your models give it more of a realistic look let's take a look at that looks nice and good all the details still there on the heads doesn't look flat anything like that um, this little gap I'll probably go in there and clean that up make sure there's kind of a hole so it doesn't look like it's actually connected to the heads go in and clean that off um, if you get some of these that are pretty bad, you could do a more aggressive grit and just come back and make sure you sand those nice and pretty. Sand them out nice. Get them nice and smooth again before you put any kind of paint on them. Oh, it's still there. And it will help. It will make a big difference in the look of your model to do all this. We're going to do this with the motor, the suspension all the little tiny components that are in this kit so next little thing I like to do once all that's kind of sanded is take these little plastic bags world of difference um, don't lose any of the small parts you know like the distributor those parts usually get lost and then you're scrounging around trying to find one keeps all these parts nicely together nice and pretty so next thing we're gonna leave one of these clamps on so where you put this together let's get that back a little um, those lines are gonna show and they're not very pretty so I use a little of this works really well the only thing we're going to do is just run across these joints. Anything that's going to be seen, anything like that. Once this dries, we'll come back and sand all this down nice and smooth. It's going to eat the plastic and mold those two lines together really, really well. Um, 
anywhere that's actually going to be seen. Will make a big difference. Um, not, I haven't pre-assembled this kit, so I'm assuming you might see a little bit of this transmission there. So we're going to smooth that out. And then we'll throw clamps back on it. Hold those really tight, closely together. Make a big difference to it. So usually that's drying. These are parts that are sanded. They're pretty close. Um, next I'll go into suspension. This is all that's really in this kit. It's nothing too special of a kit. Um, you get the bottom of the floor out here too. And usually when they're big tabs, I like to take like my X-Acto knife and just kind of make sure I'm lined up and just kind of scar it all the way down this. And then it just kind of pops off, pops off there. Same things on these back ones. Make sure I'm lined up so I'm not cutting into the body. And just kind of snap them off. Yeah, you could use snips. I do. I have some. So don't worry too much about that. Um, take a look. Right here in the middle underneath the exhaust, it has the uh, Revell. It's a little textured. We can fix the texture after we sand it. We'll go through 